rising. This is um, Carlos, and um, I am um, visiting Lou, a friend of mine, and um, we're actually sitting outside. Um, so you might hear some outside noises. So, but um, so Lou, um, we met what seven, almost seven years ago. Over okay. seven years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, in a space that was called Man Awakening. Mm -hmm. um, so let's kind of just start there. And to you, what what is awakening? And are you still there? What, what does awakening mean to you? You're just going to start with the easy question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am. Awakening. Uh, wow. Um... For me, it's be about becoming more whole and more alive mm -hmm. and coming out of a state of dissociation mm -hmm. and being checked out on autopilot, um, cruise control, uh, being mindful of what's happening in the present moment, mm -hmm. being connected to myself, so being connected to others, the world around me. Uh, what I can say is I used to have different ideas about what awakening was. Yeah. Sort of, I want to go to a bliss state and just live this awakened life. And maybe that's there. I haven't found my way there yet. Mm -hmm. At least not full time. Uh, but I definitely feel more alive. I feel more connected to myself, all of myself. Um, more present. Mm -hmm. And it's a journey. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, it's a journey. Um, what... What are some of the tools? What are some of the steps you are taking since men awakening? Because I know we don't meet in that space anymore. So, mm -hmm. what what are you doing to um, achieve um, some of those things that you talked about? You just mentioned. The first thing I would say is um, I needed to be I needed to be in a place where I was ready mm -hmm. for transformation. I needed to hit a bottom, and in my life I did. So when you and I met, uh, I was I was at a very tough place in my life. Uh, a lot of things had crashed in my life. And I guess you go to men awakening type groups when that happens. That's what we did. At that time, I had, I had found meditation um, through an organization, sort of Western Tibetan Buddhist meditation, Shambhala. And um, it started with a willingness to sit with myself to stop running away. Um, to me, strange as it might sound, awakening has to do with sitting still, has to do with stop running. And so for me, meditation um, opened the doors to me stopping running and to learn to stay with myself, what's going on inside of me. And so meditation has been a powerful tool. There's lots of types of meditation. I'm talking mindfulness meditation, sort of focusing on the breath, watching my thoughts, becoming the watcher. So that was big. And then, as you know, you and I both came into the Adult Children of Alcoholics Dysfunctional Families Program, 12-step program, trauma recovery program. And so that was a framework um, and a community, I think, which is really important. And I think both of us were looking for community with Men Awakening. Someone sort of has a sense like this is not something I can do on my own. Like we need other people to be involved in this process. And so to find a community of other people who are also interested and dedicated and I would say courageous enough to turn inward, uh, to stay with themselves. So we found that together, and that's been an important framework for me. Yeah. Um, just one thing about ACA um, in this, um, when it talks about um, sobriety. Mm -hmm. um, emotional sobriety. Emotional sobriety. Um, that just sounded different for me. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know what that meant. You know, and this morning I was kind of thinking about it. I have been thinking about it for a, for a couple of days now, emotional sobriety and, and what, what does that really mean um, to me? And for me, it, I have gained since being in program, being in recovery, um, I've gained some sense of clarity that I didn't have before you know, a sense of connecting, you know, connection. Um, 
being fully connected to myself in a sense of just I'm able more so now just to be present, you know, in moments, you know, that I used to really, you talked about dissociation mm -hmm. um, earlier, and I used to, I lived most of my young adult life disassociated, mm -hmm. and, and, and I would say outside of my body, mm -hmm. um, because, I, like I said many times before, because it was just too painful to feel, yeah. and it was too fa painful for me to hear my thoughts, mm -hmm. you know. My thoughts scared me mm. because my thoughts used to tell them, my, tell me to harm, harm me, yeah. you know, and um, too, maybe. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, talk about that piece and what does that look like for you? Mm. Well, ACA is a twelve-step program, and you didn't you didn't have any other experience in twelve-step programs, right? So, twelve-step programs are usually focused around addictions recovery. Um, chemical right. addictions, although they sort of expanded into other process or behavioral type addictions, but so you didn't really have that framework. Um, I, you know, I did a little dabbling with AA. I did free thinkers in AA because the, the religiosity was not a good fit for me. I did some Al-Anon, and I found ACA through Al-Anon. So you know, twelve step programs are an addictions recovery program, and so the word sobriety is probably going to be a part of things. Mm -hmm. it's, emotional sobriety isn't. A phrase that resonates with me deeply usually mm -hmm. but I think it's a good transition into doing trauma work and mm -hmm. understanding trauma work from an addictions recovery perspective mm -hmm. the two go hand in hand I mean people people who are in pain use mm -hmm. right because we, we want to escape like you said dissociation and chemicals are a great way to aid dissociation mm -hmm. right when our natural skills or our natural abilities to check out aren't strong enough because the pain becomes too much, we find crutches, we find things to supplement mm -hmm. that. So, you know, sobriety from chemicals is an important first step in coming out of dissociation. But yeah, the idea of emotional sobriety is being present with what is, it's being present with whatever comes up, the thoughts, the feelings, and and like I said before, stop to stop running from that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's tough, it's, it's a courageous act because it can be so painful, mm -hmm. um, especially when we've done it you know, here we are, early 50s, right? We did it for most of our life. And it becomes really habitual. And all that pain stores up, you know, into stored grief. And so I think coming into emotional sobriety for me meant going through that process of grief. Mm -hmm. And and to be clear, that's not a love and light process. This is a shadow work process. And it's painful and it's deep and people have to have a willingness to go there and it seems like you're never gonna come out. And to go there, and this is you and I, this is our fellow travelership. We yeah. went, we've walked that path together. Yeah. The path that a lot of people just don't want to go to. Yeah. And, you know, and for me, um, thank you for saying early 50s, but uh, I kind of hit the midpoint. We round down. <laughs> I, I hit the midpoint in that. But, you know, I, I just realized uh, when you made that statement that a lot of the things that I brought in before ACA that I brought in um, have shifted for me mm. um, because you was talking about um, chemical um, um, addictions. addictions and stuff like that but it's, it goes beyond that you know we have sexual mm -hmm. addictions and um, so money we, addictions, video all, games, scrolling, yeah, like, TV, I mean, working out. Yes, yeah, yeah because I think it's important that we Shopping. Mention those shopping yeah. addictions. We mention those things too because it's so. It's just broad. It's much more broader than it's just the internal drug chemical. Store. Like we, yeah. we can become a wash in our own internal chemicals when we engage in these behaviors, and it's just like you know shooting something up or drinking alcohol. The, the effect on the inside body is the same. We're we're addicted to our own internal chemicals. Yes. 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 And so emotional sobriety is detoxing from that. It's detoxing from that. Yes, and I. You know, and like you say, it's not, it's not love and light. Um, it wasn't, <laughs> you know, but the program speaks about um, becoming your own loving parent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that piece, too. That was the last thing I wanted to hear when I came into the program. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want to be yeah. what? Yeah. yeah. Um, like, reparent myself. Yeah. Like, um, last, last thing I wanted to hear. Yeah. yeah. And, 
and I, I feel like um, for me that um, I kind of got stuck with that on that word reparent myself because sometimes I feel like, woo, and you know I had parents, mm -hmm. but they was dissociated. Mm -hmm. um, my mother was um, angry, mm -hmm. a rager. Yep. Um, Dangerous. My dad, uh, I felt that he was very introverted, mm. very disconnected. Unavailable. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, f for me, I wasn't even given the tools, um, the first go around to parent, mm -hmm. to even know what parenting was. Because how can you reparent when you've never been parent? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. And so um, just coming into, into ACA with that and... Um, what kept me coming really was, um, first of all, I didn't, I knew I have tried everything else. Yeah. And like you said, I've tried the religion piece. Mm -hmm. um, I was preacher. in, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was in a ministry for a while and I was constantly seeking those things outside of myself, mm -hmm. you know, but I realized that it was, I would always end up with my um, what, how do I want to say this? I will want, I'll, I always end up with toxic people, mm. damaged people, mm -hmm. you know, and because something in me would seek them, seek them out. It was what was familiar. Yes. Yeah. That familiar piece. Yeah. It, was so it was familiar. It was just what was normal. Normal being what usually happens. And it was familiar. It was normal. And as much as I think, oh, that's, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to do things like my parents or I don't want to be like them you know, we're sort of ingrained with what we were raised with and what was imprinted and we just go to what is familiar and we end up repeating the same thing over and over and that's the intergenerational idea of dysfunction. We just pass on in one flavor or another, we pass on the dysfunction until, until we decide we're not going to and that is the emotional sobriety. That's the awakening is to come to a place that says to be conscious enough to have a choice yes. to do something different yes. because when you're on autopilot, there's no choice. You just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Yes, it's, it's, it's habit, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And it's a lot of work to get out of those tracks. It's so ingrained and it's terrifying to not do that, right? Because that's what, that's our survival. Like this is what got me here today, as dysfunctional as it is. You know, for me, people pleasing or over responsibility or these laundry list traits in ACA. This is what I held on to. This is what got me through. And now I'm supposed to let go of that? and put a lot of work in to let go of the thing that helped me get here, like that's a scary proposition. Mm -hmm. And so we have to go slowly. And so it's reparenting, but reparenting with gentleness, humor, patience, love, respect. And I can't bring that critic, which you know we talk about all the time, I can't bring that critic to take the lead in this process. It's like throwing gas on the fire. Mm -hmm. right? so it's, it's creating change from a place of love, which so is not a place that I knew very well. Yeah. Compassion, self-compassion, and love, gentleness. Well, let's talk about the critic piece. Let's do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, where, where is he in this process? Where are they? Yeah, me? yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I've got yeah. multiple critics. So, yeah. So, just to be clear, we're talking about a parts framework, mm -hmm. right? ACA is a parts framework. Got inner child, inner teen, inner critic. And, you know, you and I talk IFS, Internal Family Systems, now, and the work that I do, and you're familiar with it. It's a parts framework. So what I would say is I have multiple critic sort of aspects of me with different flavors. But my understanding of my own inner critics has definitely evolved over time. Um, it started when I first identified. Like, I, I, it immediately resonated with me that I have an inner critic. I knew that I could be harsh on myself, and probably, at least in my in my brain, my own head, I was harsh with other people. Usually didn't escape my lips because I was Lou the nice guy. Mm -hmm. But I had a, I had a clearly um, identified with the idea of having an inner critic. But it felt like, it felt like an adult part of me, um, and it felt like a bully. It felt like my abuser, like probably my worst abuser in my life. I knew that I abused myself more than anyone else could have ever done that, and that was my critic. That's how I understood it. And so, for me, it was doing battle at first. There was a lot of heated inner <laughs> interactions, right? And so, what I sort of discovered was I brought my critic to try to work with my critic, right? And a lot of cussing and internal, get the F away from me or whatever. Um, and that's the best that I could do at the time, right? That's just the best that I could do. And then, 
I guess I discovered that I wasn't going to bring love and light to my critic, but I could bring neutrality. Mm. You know, just a neutrality and just a very simple, I don't want to argue with that part of me. I don't want to engage with it. I don't want to try to convince it it's wrong. It's just a losing battle. But I can just sort of very simply say no. Mm. You know, or, you know, you've had your word. We're done with that now. It's time to move on. Mm -hmm. And find ways to set those sort of more neutral inner, inner boundaries with inner limits with the critic. And then it creates space. Yes. Right? The space is created for something else to arise. It's true. So what I'm hearing is you don't uh, deny or push them away. You, you kind of integrate it. It's somehow creating space with the critic without shame. So what I've come to understand is a critic, those critic parts of me are still just wounded children. Yeah. And so I don't want to be brutal with these parts of me. And, and I've come to the place there are no bad parts. Right? There are parts with extreme views and parts that, you know, is sort of drive the behaviors in my life. There could be consequences with that, that's for sure. But all my parts, every aspect of me that has an idea of what is best has my best intention in mind. Like, I've just come to believe that, even my critics. You know, by shaming me, well, then I'll stay small and I won't put myself out there so mm -hmm. other people won't shame me, right? There's always some way. So I've, I've come to understand I need to try to be gentle in how it is that I deal with my critic, which is completely paradoxical to what I feel like would need to happen to have that part settle down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that has been a big transition. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Have you d you've discovered something like that? Yes, yes. Um, um, that gr integrating the piece. Um, really, for me, just to make it kind of, just to simplify it a bit, is really sitting with the, that part mm -hmm. and really um, hearing what it also needs. That's right. You know, because, like you said, it, it is kids, you know. And, um, With unmet needs. Unmet needs. Mm -hmm. And um, so I needed to hear hear them and um, understand that um, they really wasn't there purposely to hurt me, right. you know, uh, to harm me. Right. In some way, um, he, I call him, uh -huh. he was a he, um, he was, he thought he was protecting me, Sure. you know, um, keeping me ways, strong. In some ways he was. Yes, yeah. keeping me strong because I had to harden through, through life. Uh -huh. And uh, I felt that I had to harden. And when did that start? When did your critics arise? Oh, uh, for me. When did they start doing what they were doing? Wow. Yeah. For me, I would say around seven, mm. eight. Mm -hmm. um, when you hardened. Yes. Because you knew you need you knew to survive, you knew you had to harden. Yes. That tenderness or just floating out there in the environment that you lived in was too dangerous and it was unbearable. Yes. So you had to harden. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and this and it was a process, mm -hmm. you know. Um it has been a process. And like you, you spoke about meditation and uh, starting my day with it and connecting, um connecting to my inner family and um really um, like I said before, hearing what they need mm -hmm. and, um, and just bringing them in, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and allowing them space. Mm -hmm. And I would say uh, space to show up in my now. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when they show up, you don't bring your critic to them anymore, right? No. What do you do? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's the big question, right? Yeah. Um, for me, what I do, um, I think I, I just believe it's the higher, um, I was going to say higher self piece, mm -hmm. higher power piece, sure, yeah. but the loving parent piece. Yeah. Um, all, yeah, it's all that, you know, all those, you know, ain't. There's a part of you that knows how to bring compassion to the parts of yourself. Yes. And you, and you access that. Yes. And you awaken that part yes. of you. That's the yes. awakening, isn't it? Yes. Um, because I th my critic would sound like my mother. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it would be my mother's vo voice. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in a meeting the other, the other day and I was t just talking and talking about, um, I never heard my mother say something kind mm -hmm. or loving, you know, or um, affirming, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and I, and I, you know, I think she suffered from po postpartum. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. she did. Eleven kids. And um, 
Um, and I just, so, I, I just took that on. You know, I, I took that you, part you on. You embodied yes. the harshness of your mom. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So it was, you know, just finding ways to quiet that. Mm. Finding ways to even meet that part's mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. uh, through compromise or, um, you know, or just loving conversation mm. with myself, mm -hmm. just loving on myself. How know? do you know what words to use? Wow, that's that's good. You can uh, feel it. Yes. yes. When you yeah. say it, you try it. Yes. And you try this, and it doesn't feel real. And you try this, it doesn't feel real. And then I say something, like I hear you, or I feel you, yeah. or something. Yeah. And you can just feel it in your body. Oh, that's what that part needs to hear. That's reparenting, right? Yep. Yep. Giving that part what that part needs. Yes. Yes. Witnessing from that part. Yes. From a place of love and compassion. Yes. Wow. It takes some practice, though, doesn't it? It takes a lot of practice. It's not overnight. It wasn't overnight. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in program. April, April will be six years. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I still, some parts of me still feel like I'm... Um, I'm new to it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, Come child's mind. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's the freshness, the newness. Yeah, and um, but, you know, but I, I, I know I'm growing, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and you've been, you've been um, creating a new relationship with yourself and your parts. Yes. Little, little Carlos, little five-year-old Carlos. Yes. You got to know him. Yes. And that was a, that was a, yes. That was a process. Yes. First, getting to know him, yeah. then getting to like him, mm. and now I'm coming into loving him. Mm. What know? was it? Because at first, you didn't like him, you did not love him. What did you feel towards him? Blame, That's right. um, needy, shame, needy, um, broken, getting in yes, the way. Yes, um, mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. Um, it was all his fault. That's right. Um, That's who the critic was, yes. was referring to, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Um, he should have known better. Mm, it's his um, fault. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. And there's yeah. that little boy sitting on that porch, kind of all alone. We've, talk, we've been there before, right? Yes. Yes. That's right. L always looking in, mm. looking without, you know, looking out. And now a lot of my focus is turning in with just looking in mm -hmm. and um, um, learning different parts of myself. And, um, and like we said earlier, just getting to know myself. Because yeah. um, it shifts, you know. Um, I'm not the same person um, that I was five years ago. You most definitely are not. I'm not the I same person. I'm not the same person either. And yes. You've been on a journey, man. Yeah. 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 And, um, Close fellow travelers. Yeah. And that's what I like about the program. Mm. Even that word, mm -hmm. fellow travelers. Yeah. Uh, I don't need a sponsor. Uh -huh. You don't <laughs> no. need an authority figure coming and telling <laughs> no. you what to do? No, because that, that was my mother. Right. And that just would not have worked for me. No. And like, you I, don't know what the hell you're no. talking about. And I buck yeah. a, the authority. Mm -hmm. I buck it. I don't give I can relate to that. Yeah. Well, I'll just become the authority so then we don't have to worry oh. about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then, I'll, just, I'll just take charge and then I don't have to ask for anything from anyone, right? That is it. Oh, some of the authority for your stuff, huh? That is it. So fellow travelers works. Yes, yeah. it, it, it has, and um, it's... And we've been on a journey. Yeah. 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 Inward journey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's just been, um, man, it's just been, it's been amazing. It's been magic. Um, yeah, it's, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, painful. <laughs> and painful. Oh my Lord. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't like, we don't mention that a lot, but uh, well, it's it, important to mention because it's debilitating and it's yeah. painful. And again, it's not a place that people would, by choice, usually, you know, be willing to go to. No, like you said, and it was a last resort for me too. Yeah, I tried all the other five bullet points of changing your life, and, right? <laughs> True. Love and light. I tried True. all that. True. And I call it sprinkling sugar on shit. Right. Personally, but and it's not that. It's not that. It's not that. It's not. It's not that. And um, it's, it's going deep within yourself, mm -hmm. feeling your feelings, yeah. and, um, you know, and... Looking under the bed. 
Oh. Looking at the little scared kids, sort of, it's like it's the willingness to sort of actually sort of get up and actually go and look under the bed. You used to say a monster. I thought there was a monster under the bed. You know what? Yeah. It turned out to be a little boy. Yeah. A little boy in a lot of pain. Yeah. And I had to kind of coax him out, and there he was. He was scared underneath. I can feel myself choking up a little bit as I think about it, because for most of my life, there was just a little scared boy under the bed thinking he messed up, he did everything wrong, he's not good enough. And so, and you can't drag the kid out, right? You have to sort of just create space for him to just sort of inch his way out a little bit at a time and let him know it's going to be okay. Is, um, is he still there? He finds his way back there mm -hmm. sometimes, right? But he doesn't live under there anymore, mm. right? He'll kind of find his way back there. There's a familiarity sort of in that space. But I think, you know, I've, I've said before that when you do genuine trauma healing work, when you meet these parts with love and compassion and you cry those tears, you only cry those tears once. There may be layers of them, you know, different sort of sets of tears, but healing really does happen and it transforms. And I don't have panic attacks the way that I used to. You know, I, I still wake up with anxiety sometimes, but not like I used to, not every day. And I don't have a critic running my life. And I don't have a little kid stuck under the bed. So he will find his way back there because it's so familiar to him at times. But I know that. I have a relationship with him. I know sort of when I'm like, oh, i got to go look under that bed again. He kind of finds his way back there. And we have a relationship. And he doesn't have to stay there. Yeah. He doesn't have to stay there anymore. Yeah. And he can be a part of my life today. Yeah, just building relationships with your parts. Yeah, building trust. Trust. Yeah. 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 Parts that um, we have left on the beds. Yeah. Or we parts that got left behind. Exiled. Um, behind the screen door. Yep. That's you know, right. um, you know, and just opening up. You know, for me, opening up the screen door. That's right. And just letting him in. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, yeah. It's, and learning, uh -huh. like you said, learning to love him. Learning to love him. Because he's so lovable. Yeah. They really are, those little ones. Yeah. 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 And they deserve it. And it wasn't their fault. It was not their <laughs> fault. And it's, um, the practice now is to make sure that they know that. To yeah. make sure they feel that, yeah. that they know that it's not their fault. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they now do have a loving parent. They do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and... Um, we give them the love that we've been seeking our whole life from other people. Yes. Wow. Wow, man. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, Maybe we'll do this again sometime. Yeah, 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 yeah in this new year. <laughs> yep. So I appreciate it, and I appreciate your uh, honesty and uh, your openness to yeah. share. Well, I so. appreciate you stepping out into the world and starting to do this podcast now. It's very thank cool. You. Congratulations. Thank you. It takes a little courage to do something like that. All right. Yeah. I love you to life, man. All right. Likewise, All right. love you to life, man. All right.